Hello again, Skippers. Recently, all of the herbs from all of the boss tables are gone. So now, all of the Ironmen have to find different ways to train Herb Lord. Let's talk about it. Now, there's going to be a ton of information in this video, so please use the timestamps in the description to skip around, especially if you don't need to know everything. If you only care about certain things, then feel free to navigate using those and save yourself some time. First, let's start with the essential items. First, let's start with the botanist outfit. You're going to want to get all five pieces plus the modified add-on. And if you do this on Spotlight, that will give you enough Thaler, or Thaler, however you say it, to get three pieces of the factory outfit. The top, the gloves, and the boots. We're going to be using a ton of botanist amulets, or the reusable Sleske set. Always prioritize more doses because that's more experience than the extra you would be getting from more botanist outfit pieces and the Sliske procs. More doses, more XP. Then we're going to have an augmented melee weapon with Ys on it, because that's more XP. For auras, we've got green fingers and wisdom. And items that are helpful that you don't need, a beast of burden like a pack yak, juju farming potions are really, really good. Perfect plus potions are really good. Torso incense sticks for any time you're making extremes or higher. The scripture of Bic plus torso incense sticks is up to 7% increased experience. That's insane. Moving on to unlocks. These engineering scrolls of cleansing and life are game changer. And then you have task sets, specifically Mauritania and the desert set. You have the Garaja resource dungeon, which is 95 engineering and plague Zent. And then we've got quests. The more quests you do, the more lamp XP you get. So the less training you have to do for all your skills. But specifically, Plague's End, Evil Dave's Big Day Out, River of Blood, Sliska's Endgame, and Extinction. D&Ds you can do for Herblore, daily challenges. You can use Jack of Trades on Herblore. The Wisdom Aura is very good, especially with higher XP rates. And your daily sandstone. For weeklies, you've got penguins and Herbie Warby, and other things, Troll Invasion Monthly, Effigy Incubator, it's indirectly. You can fill the effigies while you're doing your farm runs, and sometimes you get Dragonkin Lamps for Herblore. Or, semi-daily, The Dream of Aya. One of the plots is Herblore. It's a lot of XP. One of the biggest sources for both farming and Herblore experience is your player and farms. If you're looking to set this up for ideal Herblore experience, Go in the small pens, one pen of rabbits, this is for the breeding perk and super hunter potions, and one of chinchampas for the invention potions. In the mediums, you got spiders for the super invention, extreme runecrafting, and holy aggro overloads, and the other pen of zygomites for super cooking, super divination, and extreme invention potion. And the large pens, cows until you have yaks, then yaks forever. The cows are for extreme hunter potions, and the yaks, specifically the Fremenic yaks, are for super runecrafting and extreme divination potions. The reason it's Fremenic is because the yak milk is only from the Fremenics and only from female Fremenics. Once you unlock it, branch out of time is much simpler. Small pens, frogs. Mediums, Baranosaurus. And large pens, one of each type. One of Apoterosaurus, one of Rexes, one of Stegosaurus, Dutes and whatever you need the most of in the breeding pen. Usually it's bottled dinosaur roars, but not always. Now that we've gone over the basics, let's get a little bit more complicated. We're going to get to the best bank of the game. So first we have to create a group. Then we'll adjust it, set it to Liberation Mascab. And teleport. And we're going to right-click this portal, choose the Ekamaru, we're not about to go solo it, I promise. If you don't have a Beastmaster kill, you can't access this bank. The only thing you'll miss out on is potentially cooking or fire making training. Just go down here to the south, you can still buy your potions. But I like this one because it's instanced and I can lit a fire. Anyways, let's buy our potions and then we'll set up some uh, herbal training. So first I've got a preset, 
I am making Cerebrus, which is a 3 dose potion. So I have the factory outfit and the botanist amulets on. I am using a pack yak right now. It is alternating between the potion and the secondary. So we've got to the bank, go to the preset, now we're going to make potions. When my inventory is full, or about full, I will give Beasts of Burden and then take Beasts of Burden. I have it keybound, that way I only have to click once and then press the keybind once. However you want to do it, really. And your character continues making more potions. Here's an example where I'm not making three dose potions. So I've got five pieces of Botanist, the Sliske set. This is a really high XP potion. It's Power Burst of Vitality. So I'll have the Scripture of Bic here. Normally I would be using Wisdom Aura and Torsal Six as well. My piece of burden is alternating once again between the ingredients. And I just keep withdrawing from my yak. And it pretty much doubles my inventory, sometimes more. If it's an untradeable potion, then you definitely don't want to use a pack yet, because that's not going to do anything. You can also use a fruit bat familiar instead of a beast of burden if you want papayas. Papayas are really useful for adrenaline potions, and you need a lot of those. Now that bosses don't drop herbs, the best way to get all of these is to do a farm run. It's plain and simple. A good source to get almost every seed is to pickpocket the crux of Qual Knights. Besides those other two methods, there's a lot of other ways to get herbs. Here are a couple efficient ways. Starting with Guam, we've got Farm Runs, Garden of Karid, or Batch 1s, Low Level Slayer, and Abbey Spectres. I'm not going to be saying the same things over and over and over again. I'm just going to say what's different. With the Guams, make attack potions if you're under level 45 herb lore, and make her patch once if you don't have Garaho Dungeon unlocked. If you have both of these things, you don't need Guam. Taraman, you can get the same way. You're going to make strength potions, but only until level 55. Marantil, you can also get the same ways. You're going to make Guthix Rests or Anti Poisons until level 48 Herb Lord. Horrorlanders, you can get from Giant Ant Soldiers. You're going to make Guthix Rests, Cooking Potions, Energy Potions, or Restore Potions but only until 63. Renar, you can get from Vyres. You're gonna make prayer potions. Plain and simple. Toadflex, also from Vyres. Cerebrus, Spiritweed Seeds. Archglacer, hard mode is by far and away the best source of these. You have more than you'll ever want. If you don't wanna do hard mode, if you're a hardcore or allergic to streaking, then do five mechanic. That's still the best source in the game. Raksha is close, but 5 mech or glacier is still better. You're going to make summoning potions or spirit read incense sticks. And make sure you make your summoning potions into spiritualized prayers, if you have the level. Irrit, you can get from Big Game Hunter or from Vyres. You're going to make super attack potions, or if you really want to, poison buffs. Even with the plus 2 recipe, these are barely worth making, so... Only super attacks? It's still fine. Regali. You can get from giant ant soldiers, and you're going to make runecrafting potions. If you ever make the fractured staff of Armadil, you're going to want these. These will be made into super runecrafting, into power burst of sorcery to double your runes crafted, or extreme runecrafting to craft more water runes, or both. Avento, big game hunter, or virus. You can make extreme attack potions, super energy potions, which get made into adrenaline or stamina potions, Hunter Potions, or Archaeology Potions. Coolworm, Big Game Hunter, or Virus. Make Super Strength Potions, or if you're a PDMer, Incense Sticks. Bloodweed, you have to do your farm runs. You can only grow Bloodweed Seeds in the Wildy Patch. Do your farm runs. Make Aggression Potions, and upgrade them to Holy Aggro Overloads, to maximize your supplies. Snapdragons, Virus, Rare Drop Table. Make Super Restore Potions or Invention Potions. Catantine. Big Game Hunter, Fires, and Enemu. Make Super Defense Potions or Sticky Bombs. Lanodimes. Same sources, also Hellware. Make Extreme Defense Potions, Super Magics, or, or Anti-Fires, and upgrade them to Super Anti-Fires. Dwarf Wheat. Same sources, and God Wars 2. Make Extreme Strengths, 
super ranging potions, and vault bombs. Wait until plus two. Torstals, same sources, rare drop table. Make overloads and incense sticks. Remember your incense sticks. They will save you so much supplies. Our books, Big Game Hunter and Anachronia Slayer. No other sources. Make adrenaline renewals, only when you get plus two. Or stamina potions, those are for the acceleration power bursts. Fell stocks, dark beasts, shadow creatures, those are the best two sources. Make prayer renewals, remember the Mauritania legs four, and in Mauritania. Or elder overloads. And remember, this is a combination potion, so Mylar District on Voice of Saren. Only. Those are all the herbs. Just a quick summary of a couple of overall methods. Slayer, her patch ones, PVM for seeds, Garden of Carid Thieving for almost every seed, Aberrant Spectres, Giant Ant Soldiers, and Fires. Also Big Game Hunter, but Big Game Hunter sucks. Let's go over secondaries. I have new, you can buy from the Herblore stores, and you can also buy Limpwort Roots and White Berries. Limpwort Roots you can get from Croesus and from Virus. White Berries you can get from Corp. They also spawn in the Wilderness and in Tyronwyn. There are two spawns in the Wilderness, but this is also in the Wilderness, so it's more dangerous than the Elflands. Red Spider Eggs from Croesus and from Virus. Snakegrass you can get from Aberrant Spectres and from Virus, but only in seed form from Virus. Mort Meyer Fungus you can collect from Mauritania which is faster than Croesus, but Croesus gives plenty. Dragon Scale Dust, you can pick in the Taverly Blue Dragon Resource Dungeon. That is a mouthful. Wine of Zamorak, you can get from Slayer, from PVM, and from Fires. Crush Nests, you can get from Arch Glacier. Streaking is better than 5 mech. Or you can just collect from your kingdom if you have workers on wood or hardwood. Papayas, you can get from Fruit Bat Skelly which is summoning a fruit bat and using the special while you skill. Grenwall spikes you can get from Grenwalls or from Big Game Hunter. Now this is not every secondary that you'll use for Herblore, but these are the ones you use the most. If you need more help for secondaries, please ask in the comments below. And this is yet another reminder, combination potions are any potion that you use a crystal flask to make, or a potion in a crystal flask that you're upgrading. Only make these during the Mylar Voice of Saren, in the Mylar District. This is plus 20% experience, or plus 25% with a perfect plus potion. And also, remember your daily sandstone with the resourceful aura, if you have it. Because 50 a day will not last you very long. And 0 a day will not last anywhere near as long as that. And finally we've got Bombs and Power Bursts. They're a great source of experience, but once again, don't make them until you have the plus 2 recipes. As I said earlier, poison bombs are barely worth making. They're just a little bit more experienced than the weapon poison plus 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 potions, but they're way less useful. Also, for opportunity power bursts, or power bursts of opportunities, don't make these until you're done with archaeology. And that's your opinion, whether it's 200 mil, or whether it's 120 and your weapons, or it's just 99. Only you know when you're done with archaeology. Don't use up your third age iron until you're done with the skill. And these are also not worth making if you need to gather both Phasmatite and Third Age Iron. If you only need to gather one, you can argue that it's worth making. Personally, I would just make Sticky Bumps. They're a similar experience, and you don't have to gather Phasmatite or Third Age Iron. Power Burst Defeats are pretty good XP, and all the supplies are very cheap. Snapdragon, Summoning Potion 3 Dose, Bottle Dinosaur War. Easy. But you get more out of your supplies, making spiritual prayers and anything else with the roars. Plus, power burst defeats are useless. So, your call on this they're cheap to make, they're decent XP. Or you make potions or bomb bombs or anything that's actually useful. Your call. As for the rest of the bombs and the power bursts, go nuts. If you want to use all of the rock tails and all of the brews you have in your bank, to make power burst of vitalities that you'll probably never use, but you want a quick 120 Herblore cape, go for it. And one quick thing I forgot to mention, the 120 Herblore cape provides 25% more overloads when you use it, so if you can help it, 
Don't make all of your supplies into overloads. Wait until you're 120. And then once you're 120, then go nuts. To sum this up, always do your farm runs. Do lots of them. Buy your mascot potions. Wait until you have the plus two recipes unlocked. More doses is more XP. So every time you're making three dose potions, make sure you have three pieces of the factory outfit on, as well as using botanist amulets. Or if you don't feel like training it, just lamp it. This video is up to date as of December of 2022. If there are any minor changes, I'll put them in a pinned comment below. If there are any major changes, I'll make another video. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, please leave it a like. And until next time, take care.